I've recently been reading this uh, book called The Innovator's Prescription by Clayton M. Christensen. And I think this is a wonderful book. Uh, it's, it's a very disruptive book that tries to tackle healthcare, the system as a whole, and then suggest alternative ways in which the cogs of the healthcare system could turn so that it outputs better patient care for cheaper. And uh, Clayton M. Christensen is the author of The Innovator's Dilemma, and this is his take on the healthcare market. So one point uh, that I found very appealing was that the fact that hospitals do a lot of different things. Uh, so if you take any standard hospital, right, you go there, there is somebody who's doing the diagnostic work there, you know, they're working you up. There are doctors who are in the OPD who are doing that. Uh, then they have an operating theater where they do the uh, surgeries. And then they have, you know, they have some counselors who are able to uh, see and manage certain patients. Uh, and then you have an insurance wing which does certain other things. Now, the book argues that whenever you have more than one process, so it, this is not specific to healthcare, as a business, if you just do more than one specific process, your overhead increases. So for example, a company, uh, I think they actually show an example of a factory which produces one very specific product versus two specific, two different products. And then the cost of actually developing this doubled. And then when you add three, four, it, it quadruples and then it becomes 10 times more expensive to actually develop these different uh, varieties of products as opposed to just doing one thing. And it makes sense, right? Like you're as you increase the number of services that you can provide uh, the the uh, patient in in case of healthcare systems or in case of manufacturing uh, the product needs to go through multiple different routes and there are always going to be overheads associated with all of these routes right uh, so what they argue is that the hospital system today uh, is not supposed to do so many different things and in fact it can be broken down into three major business models and most hospitals today are doing all three of them because historically that's how uh, things have kind of worked out people go to hospitals to get things done so that particular hospital needs to kind of do everything otherwise the patient will not have a place to really uh, get served but with the you know with the changing world with uh, globalization that's not the case anymore so let's look at how um, innovators prescription suggests these business process should look like so first up uh, they talk about solution shops so first you have these uh, you know again in traditional business sense solution shops are places where you go to uh, and they will solve a problem right and uh, this could be, for example, a boutique consultancy agency. It could be a design firm where you go there and then they're able to charge you a certain amount of money, usually uh, upfront or after you've solved the problem. And they, their only uh, purpose is to actually solve your problem. Now, in the healthcare domain, uh, this is the equivalent of actually diagnosing a patient, right? So uh, a doctor, who is sitting in an OPD practice and then seeing patients one after the other, what they're essentially doing is they are tagging each patient with a diagnosis. So now that is a solution shop model where a patient comes in, you do all the possible uh, tests possible and you tag them with a very accurate diagnosis. So the, the point of the solution shop part of the healthcare system is to tag this particular patient with an as accurate diagnosis as possible. And uh, they get paid directly for the diagnosis that they make, right? So I'll just also say, so they do, let's say, diagnosis, right? So now once you have a patient with a diagnosis, the patient does not need to go to the same hospital to get these other things that they need done. So for example, once you have a very specific diagnosis uh, and you know that, for example, let's say it's cataract surgery, 
right? So a patient gets diagnosed with cataract surgery. Uh, a solution shop had doctors who were listening to the patient's uh, history. They did uh, investigations necessary. They examined the patient in as much detail as possible. And they came out with the diagnosis of, uh, you know, mature cataract, let's say. Now, what uh, the innovator's prescription uh, argues is that instead of having all of the additional processes uh, in the same physical location, there needs to be different value adding processes that are their own organizations. So for example, what they suggest is that if somebody has the diagnosis of cataract, there should be a center dedicated solely to just doing cataract surgeries. And again, value adding processes in the business sense is any place where uh, you are able to, you know, the manufacturing is a good example. Uh, you take in raw materials, you take in iron ore, for example, and then let's say you make steel. Uh, or you take in steel and then you make railway tracks. So all of these are value adding processes. So in the, uh, in the context of medicine, what uh, Innovator's prescription is arguing is that a patient with a particular diagnosis for whom a particular procedure can be done is indeed going through a value adding process. So, you know, the patient comes in uh, sick and uh, again, this is, a, this is my rendition of a sad patient and they go out um, happy, right? So, they have been cured. So now, this can be done independently of the solution shop, right? Like the diagnosis can be done in one specific uh, locality and the value adding process can be done in a completely different location, right? And they talk about a lot of um, examples of this. So for example, the Shoulders Hospital uh, in the US, which specializes only in uh, care for uh, hernia repairs, actually are able to do it almost 10 times uh, cheaper than the, you know, than the standard care that's available. So the reason is because that's the only thing they do. So if you're able to do one thing really well again and again, you're able to bring down prices, you're able to also provide much uh, superior patient care. So they get cured faster, they are able to um, take in massive amounts of patients because that's the only process they do. They don't have that many overheads. And also this actually, uh, it, it brings another uh, very fundamental, you know, there is a problem in medicine that a lot of people are facing today, which is how do you know the doctor is doing the best possible uh, thing for your health, right? So a lot of businesses, so when a business is based on the value adding process of uh, this business model and a hospital charges you for their procedures and you know it's pay for service in a fee for service model what ends up happening is that the doctors are incentivized to over diagnose over treat so that you they can make more money out of you right and i think this is a very common uh, fear that most patients have that oh they are doing this procedure because they want to make more money because that's how people make money by doing more procedures right but this just this you know splitting the solution shop and the value adding process actually solves that problem in its entirety because the organization or the hospital that's actually doing the diagnosis in this case uh, the solution shop is completely different from the the organization that's actually doing the surgery which will be a separate cataract center right and now they also talk about a third type of uh, business model which is facilitated networks and again uh, this an example in the normal business sense would be something like ebay or uh, you know a peer to peer network where there are participants and they all participate and the business model here is that they either charge for tr for the transactions that they do on the network or they uh, pay a subscription uh, a fixed fee subscription right so uh, what Clayton uh, argues here is that while value adding processes, this could be surgery, this could be, for example, a chemotherapy regimen, it could be anything that can be done separately once a diagnosis is given. Uh, but in case the diagnosis is chronic, so for example, type 2 diabetes uh, or chronic depression. So in that case, 
there is no one single uh, value adding process there is no one single medication or surgery that can cure this particular ailment then facilitated networks actually become much more powerful so here what you have is you know you have uh, multiple participants in the network all of these uh, you know some of these may be patients some of these may be nutritionists some of these may be uh, you know diabetologists and a patient comes and joins this network and you know he already he or she already has the diagnosis made so let's say a patient with type 2 diabetes now pays a fixed fee to the facilitated network to now manage and control uh, his diabetes right so the facilitated network since it's paid a fixed fee the only thing that it needs to care about is the welfare of the community members and its patients so this model works really well for almost all chronic care where um, behavioral changes can make a big difference so even if you know there are peers in the network who share their experiences on how they've managed to uh, keep their diabetes at bay or you have nutritionists who are with you in the network and they provide moral support and they provide uh, that peer engagement that you need they are incentivized to track the data of the the network because they are again they are paid a fixed fee and uh, they and again if it's a full risk model there is also there are some facilitated networks which also take care of your complete disease so in case you have a complication they will pay for it in case you need uh, drugs they will pay for it so if that's the case and you know you're paying a premium uh, per month they are actually incentivized to try and cure you as much as possible because you are going to pay this particular uh, fee regardless right like so you are going to pay them because you're you're diagnosed with a chronic disease they do not want to make money out of you by asking you to pay for medications which is in contrast with the system right now right so if you take uh, this what they would instead be doing is they'll be tracking how healthy the participants are uh, you know how how the lifestyles of these patients are and what they can do to make sure that they're healthy so that they don't have to spend more on drugs and uh, surgery right so that's the facilitated network uh, model and now I think all three of this combined uh, what the innovators prescription I mean uh, argues is that it has the potential to give us a completely new kind of healthcare system right so again if you are able to separate the solution shops the value adding process and the facilitated networks into its own things you also avoid a lot of um, clash of interest conflicts of interest because you know the doctor is always being second guessed these days uh, because uh, they are not aligned with the patient's welfare and the economic models are not aligned with the patient's welfare so i think separating these three things out into their own business models uh, makes a lot of sense uh, and again like i would definitely recommend that you give this uh, book a read it's uh, really good and this is just like one small chapter out of the book i'll probably be doing more series and going in depth about the other concepts that are outlined in this book as well so that's it for this one uh, bye bye